So now that I know she's okay, I wanted to use photos of Harlow when she was having an impaction colic to compare to photos of her when she is in a regular relaxed state to help people understand how to differentiate between similar expressions in horses to understand pain. A lot of people have difficulty understanding and applying the equine grimace scale and I thought it might be helpful to use photos of the same horse to show the differences in the facial features when she is in pain and stressed versus when she is calm. So this left photo here is her when she was having an impaction colic. As you can see, her lips are very tight. They're pulled back and she has a tense jaw. You can see the chewing muscles engaged. Her ears are turned out to the side completely and they're wider at the base. And her eye is listless and dull, and she has a peak above her eye and some tension around the eyelid. Now, look at the right photo and the difference in her expression. Her eyes are much brighter, and despite the fact that she was chewing hay in this photo, her chewing muscles are less engaged. Her lips are much more relaxed, and her nostrils are also much more relaxed. Now, we'll compare this again. Look at her nostrils in the left photo, and notice how the shape is different than from the right. They're much more tense, and they're pulled back, and it changes the actual shape of the nostril from the natural shape to that. And her lips are also very pulled back. You can see the tension along the side of her face and the chewing muscles being really engaged. Also, her eyes are very hard and staring. And there's tension above the eyelid that's harder to see because of the angle of this photo. Also, her ears are still pointed outwards and wider at the base. In this photo, she is chewing some hay, so you can see some engagement of the chewing muscles, but she has a much softer eye, much softer nose, and no tension around the nostrils. Her ears are loose and relaxed, and she's focused on the environment and paying attention to me. Since the left photo can look to some people like she's just resting, I wanted to compare it to a photo of her actually resting. Now again, notice the difference in shape of the nostril and how her front lip isn't pulled back hard against her teeth. Additionally, her jaw is not clenched. It's nice and relaxed. Her eyelids are half closed, but she is just relaxing. There's softness around the eye and her expression is much softer. Her ears are also slightly turned out, but they're relaxed and they're not tense and they're also not facing both outwards wide at the base. Now look at the difference in the eyes in both of these photos. Her eye is much softer in the right photo and it doesn't have tension around the eyelid in the same way as the left. She also is not clenching her jaw as much, you can't see the chewing muscles engaged. And again, we see the difference in shape of nostril and how her lip is. You can see that her front lip is loose and it's not directly pulled against her teeth because she's not clenching her jaw and pulling her lips back due to a grimace from being in pain. This comparison is more of an indicator of stress in the left photo. This is from her at the racetrack. As you can see, there's a peak above her eye, chewing muscles engaged, lips pulled back nice and tense. Her ears are forward, but she's alert in a way that is more fearful and more stressed. Compared to the second photo, her eye is nice and relaxed, lips nice and relaxed, nostrils nice and relaxed, no chewing muscles engaged. Now, the left photo is when she was in considerable amounts of pain and she's laying down. You can see how clenched her jaw is right there. Her lips are pulled back to show her teeth because she is bringing her lips back into a grimace. Look at the shape of her nostril compared to this one and also look at how her bottom lip is sitting compared to this photo where her face is relaxed. And again, even while laying down, her ears are turned out to the sides wide at the base. And her eye is dull and listless. Compared to this photo, she's bright, she's alert, there's no tension around the eye, not clenching her jaw, nice and relaxed. Now, the whale eye confuses a lot of people. For those of you who don't know, whale eye refers to the white of the eye showing. However, it isn't necessarily an indicator of stress in all cases. Some horses show more sclera than others. So you need to look at the context of the entire situation and also gauge all of their behaviors. See in this photo, you can see the white of her eye, but it's because she's rotating her eye to look at me. In this one, she is facing the wall, her head is down, her ears are turned out and wide at the base, and she's having a whale eye which is not normal in this circumstance. And when you also look at the tenseness of the jaw and how prominent her chin is and how her lips are pulled back into a grimace, that all paints the photo showing she's in pain. Lastly, obviously these are not the same horses. This is Harlow colicking in this left photo and this is Pogo sleeping in this right photo. Notice how you can see the gap between his bottom lip and his teeth. That is because he is not pulling that lip back into a grimace and clenching his jaw. Also notice the lack of chewing muscles engaged. Whereas right here, you can clearly see she is clenching her jaw and biting down quite hard. Now in this photo, Pogo's ears are turned out a little bit, but look at the difference in tension. His are much looser. Hers are very tense. Context really matters when you're trying to gauge pain in horses. So looking at the whole picture is important and learning what your horse's normal resting face is is also important because that'll help you learn when they are looking different. 
Recognizing the subtle differences in the face when a horse is in pain can save your horse from career-ending injuries and also be a life-or-death situation if you catch things early. Noticing the difference in your horse's facial structure will help you also gauge stress and help prevent them from going over threshold and just be safer in general. But being able to tell whether or not they are in pain or when they're displaying signs of discomfort is very important and it'll help you develop a better relationship with your horse. And it'll also help you advocate for them in situations where they are not doing well or not being themselves. I hope that this was helpful. If you want more in-depth stuff like this, I highly recommend subscribing to my Patreon channel. That is linked at the link in my bio.